Thank you. Uh, so, hi everyone. I am Przemysław Solski uh, from 11-bit studio. Uh, I'm currently working on Frostpunk, where I'm one of the main game designers. And today, I would like to take you behind the scene and show you how the process of making Frostpunk looked like. From beginning to end, from blank page to polished games we, that we can give to the player with clear conscience. So, oh, it's not that way. Okay, so this is my presentation plan. Uh, firstly, I would like to tell something about our game philosophy and tell you about our previous game, the DD Surf Mine. And after that, I proceed to the main part of the main lecture and tell you in a few steps how, how the process of, uh, how creative process of Rosbank looked like. So, our studio want to make only meaningful games. But what exactly does this mean? We want to be some kind of alternative to triple A productions, like an independent movie, some kind of alternative to Hollywood product production. We want to create, not copy, and we want to make something what is worthy. So I think there are four main ingredients which, which become uh, the game more meaningful. There is emotion. We want the player to truly feel something. Meaningful values that you want to convey. Fresh experience. You know, we want, we want this kind of feeling of something new. And of course, we always want to leave the player with plus, with po po post playthrough re reflection. And I think the first our game which achieved all this goal was this worth mine. The story about the war where you are not the soldier but a civilian was a big success. So this convinces us to make meaningful games. After the premiere, we felt that this is the path which we want to follow. And in this moment, the first punk story has begun. Of course, after this sort of mine, we have the player have big expectation. Of course, we always have. So we couldn't make an ordinary game. It, it was hard for us. It was very hard to start something new. So a few months later, we made first prototype, which we called Industrial. Basically, it was steampunk city builder. It wasn't a bad game, but we felt that something is m was missing. This game didn't look like a worthy successor of This Worth Mine. So we decided to start again from the blank page. Of course, it doesn't mean that we threw away everything. We're sure about the setting. We felt that Team Pack is something interesting. And of course, we want to make a city builder. So we are looking for strong emotions, sense of involvement and purpose, and meaningful subject to talk about. We need a unique wheel which transfer our ordinary idea 
into something extraordinary. And this searching lead us to Frostpunk. The combining of steampunk and with, uh, with winter apocalypse was crucial. This idea opened the new door for us. And this is how Frostpunk was born. We gained the main enemy, extreme cold. So even the steam technology began to make sense because steam gives you not only an energy, but also warmth, which is crucial if you fight against, uh, against winter. We know that we want to make a story about the last city. So this game was not only about the building, but also about sur surviving. The people has to adapt to the new cruel world. And this led us to the moral choices. So these assumptions convinced us. We felt that, that, this, di that this direction is something where we, where we want to go. And this was the first paper prototype. Uh, it didn't look fancy, but answer us for many, many very important questions. Uh, as you can see, this is the basic CDT view. In the m with the generator in the middle and the heat zones around it. And there where you see this description, Misha, which means bear, bears, this is some kind of first visualization of Frostland. So after the prototype, the, visual, the vision clarified how the game should, like, sh should look like. Due to that, we knew that we have into the game three key systems. The city view, when the player spent the most part of, of time. Frostland, which opens a wider perspective for the player. And the Book of Laws, where we can shape the new society. So, city view. We wanted to make the first impression on the player. This was very important for, for, for us. So this is the first concept art, which showed the beginning. We see the round shape, which is easy to remember, is intriguing and unique. And the middle of that is a cold generator, which we should to turn on. So the natural development of this idea was to make city layer, layer radial. To something new, I don't know the game which have something like that. So it was really, really hard to implement. But I think it was worthy. It emphasized the uniqueness of our city. Of course, we have a problem. For example, this is in, in that idea, it doesn't look like an uh, organic city. So this led us to the next feature, the frontage. Buildings which aren't separated by street are connected. And, because, and due to that, we achieved more organic looks of the city. The next the big challenge was the generator. There are uh, early conception how the generator could look like. We know that we need, we know that the heart of the city should be iconic. So the early prototype, the third one, get into the game. When we started to create our steampunk setting, we felt uh, that we need something that we need a fresh opening. This is 
the reason why we went to the sources. One of our artists, Mateusz Bednarz, came to the library and made this machinery encyclopedia. These all examples are real projects from 19th centuries. For example, this you, you can see the illustration which inspired us to make a sawmill. And this is how it looked like in, 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 in the game. The next big challenge for us uh, was to make the cold the real enemy. So we developed the temperature system, which is easy to learn, but give the player many possibilities to solve the problem. On this screen, you can see the early prototype of temperature overlay, which show the player where the situation is the most screw up. Of course, generator was the main tool. Uh, due to that, the player can solve the temperature problem. However, we need a lot of iteration to create a system that on the one hand will be complex, but on the other will not overwhelm the player. And now I want to show you how long we, way we came. This is the first digital prototype. As you can see, there is no radial uh, layout system, but the hole is round. In the middle, we have the generator. And this is how it looks like the game on the premiere. And, see, and as you can see, we made a huge progress of quality. But the basic assumptions are the same. The second main system is the Frostland. This is how it looked like the first concept of them. In my personal opinion, the, the first time when when the f the first time when I see the Frostland, it's a very memorable moment. And this first line give our games. Uh, this first line give uh, give to our games that it seems to be bigger and deeper. Mostly, uh, we use the first line to to gather additional resources, uh, which help us to survive. But of course, for us, this is an opportunity to tell a backstage story. And at the beginning. Frostlink was much more complex. For example, scouts need to eat and then can die without food on the Frostland. But it didn't work because it distracted the player. So we decided to simplify. And the first main system is Book of Law, which in my personal opinion is crucial. In this book, we can shape our society and adapt to the new world. We have two book of laws in the game. At the beginning, the players see only the adaptation tree. The beginning is hard. So there the player can find a law which can help him to survive. But every law has a moral cost and further consequences. For example, the child labor. If you choose this law and force children to, uh, to work in dangerous places like the coal mine, something like that could happen. We have the situation that that was some kind of accident and people are worried about that and we can do something or ignore it. And our system, in, in our game, we have quite smart event system uh, of events which appears from time to time uh, consequences of our decision. Most of them are small, like this one, which the player can even ignore, but some of them are, are the big one. 
the beginning we have only the big one, but it wasn't a good solution because you know the player uh, because this interrupted the playthrough and because of that we decided to use this dilemma only in a special occasion. <laughs> At the half of the first scenario, we have a plot twist which unlocks the second, the, the second tree, the purpose tree. It is something more than only an adaptation. It allows us to shape our society in two directions, faith or order. From the beginning, it is nothing bad, you know. The temple helped people to, to, to help people to recover hope. The neighborhood watch can even prevent the accident, for example, when one kid, when one kid wants to get into the generator. But of course, we can go further and cross the line. Fight becomes a fanatism and order becomes tyranny. Our cho choices also change the look of our city. For example, faith. With each step in the city will be more and more re religion symbols until finally even the generator will become a place of a worship. And this follow us to the last part of my speech, the ending. As I said at the beginning, very important for us is playthrough reflection. So we, we, we wanted to achieve it, but very simple tools, because we don't have time. But I think this simple solution is, is, is very, very strong. So we use the simple su subtitles to tell the player about his choice. And in the background, we can see how our city was building. In this way, we have reached the end. So I would like to finish my, sp my speech with this quote. The city survived, but what is worth it? You must answer it yourself. Thank you. Takže máte někdo nějaké otázky? Do you have any questions? Anyone? Uh, do you plan add some uh, in the first pan game? Do you plan add some ad uh, action? For example, uh, enemy gang is see your city and tries to conquer it. For example, you have 12 days until they reach to your city and you have to build up defense. Mm, I'm not sure about that, but uh, and I'm not sure if I can tell you s about our future, but you know. The first punk is a special game. It's about a uh, morality. It's about very difficult choice. Even if we do something like that, probably we couldn't make, you know, simple tower defense. This is not the first punk. So if we make a scenario about some kind of confli conflict, we do this in our way. Uh, do you have any plans for uh, some kind of like greater expansions or DLCs? If it's something that you can talk about? Yes, we have planned to make a DLC. I'm sorry, but I couldn't tell you more about that. But uh, probably um, in a f two months, something will be an an announced. So uh, this is an interesting design philosophy that basically you 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 take this a, a simple idea for instance in this war of mine it was like 
how do civilians act in a war and in Frostpunk it's basically how do how does society uh, like uh, behave I I at the brink of ex extinction and uh, is this something that you actually refer to throughout the design process I is it like this big rule like let let's take every design decision that you make and let's think about like should this fit into the game if we think about it like is this something that people would be thinking about mm -hmm. uh, when they're about to go extinct? Uh, so we always start from the uh, big idea, which means that in one or two sen senten sentences, you have, to d you have described the main concept. For example, what, this is what you say about the, the, f the frost punk and the this of mine. So the this reminds this is a story about the war, but you are not a soldier, but a civilian. We always start from uh, from these one or two sentences. After that, we make the first high-level document, uh, which we describe our basic assumptions, and after that, we make the first prototype. Mostly, it's a paper prototype. When we're sure about this idea, we go further. I wanted to ask you more technical question. Uh, have you used your own in-house game engine or did you use some existing engine or? Yes, so we have our engine, liquid engine. Oh, <laughs> sounds cool. Yes, and I think it's quite powerful, powerful engine, but also very hard for us, you know. But, you know, we can do everything. We also, we don't have to wait for you know some fix for from Unity or Unreal. Also, I wanted to ask. It was quite a transition from this world of my world <coughs> of mine to Frostpunk because this world of mine was more 2D game, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Frostpunk was obviously 3D. Was it more hard for you to make 3D game because before you you started as a studio with this world of mine, right? Yeah, it was a really hard process. As you see, the first prototype. We have to, you know, cancel, and uh, so it it means that six months of our work go to the trash. Uh, but we learn a lot, and during this process, our small company became much more larger. Now there are uh, 100 people. During the this work of mine was probably something about 20 people. No, what you want to say that it's already a big team for 2D game like this word of mine, 20 people is a lot, I think. Okay. <laughs> Personally. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great game. Uh, since you make uh, such an emotionally intensive games, uh, did you ever, as a team, introdu introduced elements uh, that you personally or other team members personally felt offended by? You are asking about our trailers? Uh, no. Um, did you ever, as a team, introduced elements into your games that offended your mo your own morality? Yeah. You know, we made a big research, and really, this story which we showed the player is it's very nice. The ordinary history is much more better. From the beginning of 19th century. All children were working for 14 hours per day. So and then when we and we started with uh, with uh, with uh, children which couldn't work. So yes, yes, Prob pr probably there is a lot of this this part of our games which we which we have to make more understandable for the modern player. <laughs> 